Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ben. I am a freelance motion control operator based out of Clearwater, Florida. And today I'm gonna help you set up a custom blender rig that is driven completely by Flare through OSC. So uh, without further ado, we'll just jump right into the video. And uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download the Add Routes plugin, which I'll have a link listed down below in the description. Uh, you're gonna click this little button right here and it's gonna download a zip file. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is open up Blender and we're going to configure the Add Routes plugin. So I'll start with a new file. Uh, this is probably what your layout is going to look like. If you're new to Blender, you use your middle mouse to kind of click and drag around. And then if you hold Shift, you can kind of move like this. Uh, so I'm going to press A on my keyboard and delete everything. It's a pretty common practice. I'm in Blender 4.0. Uh, and we're going to go to Edit, Preferences add-ons and we're going to click this install button right here you're going to go to your downloads folder and you're going to find the zip file that you just downloaded from the add routes website i already have this installed so you just click this little box to make sure that it's enabled Boop, just like that and you're good to go okay if you press n on your keyboard or if you click this little arrow right here it will bring up your toolbar and down at the bottom you'll find your most recently installed add-ons so Add our config, we're going to go to OSC config, and we're going to type in 127.0.0.1. And we're going to type in whatever port number you want, it's arbitrary. And we're going to check it so that it's listening on that port. Uh, if you're connected to like an Unreal machine or something like that, it's a different computer, you're going to want to make sure that you type in the right IP address up here, which can be configured in your network settings. Uh, in this case, since I'm uh, communicating between uh, Flare and Blender on the same local machine, I can just broadcast to this local IP, which is 127.0.0.1. It'll be the same for yours as well. So I forgot to mention that if you are trying to use this in a real-time environment with an actual rig, uh, you're going to, one, want to make a hardline connection uh, between the Flare switch, the one that is actually communicating with the robot, um, and your Unreal PC or whatever your other machine is. Uh, you're gonna wanna configure the IP address in that ethernet port on your Unreal machine uh, to match uh, the in time subnet. So it's gonna be like 192.168.1.xxx, uh, whatever those last three numbers are. Just make sure there's no IP conflicts between your actual rig uh, and the Unreal PC that you've configured the IP address for. So um, yeah, now back to the video. <laughs> Uh, so if we come down to routes, uh, you'll see we have a couple of options here. We're only going to be using tools and project routes in this in this particular tutorial. So um, now that we have that set up, what we're going to do is we're going to come to Flare. And the beautiful thing about Flare, I'm not exactly sure when they added this feature, but wow, I am very grateful for it. So if we, oh, if we uh, make sure that the rig is turned on, and we go to home, rig's already in position. We store this, just make two points, just trust me. And we're gonna go to file, export. And for the format, for the data format, we're gonna choose 3D scene. And then 3D file format, we're gonna choose blend as like a, or a blender, a blend file, excuse me. So right here, we will navigate to where we wanna save it. Um, I'm gonna go to blender. And this is where I have all my things. So I'm just gonna name this uh, tutorial. And actually I'm gonna save this in my asset browser. So that will be important later. If you wanna make an asset library folder uh, for your Blender assets and asset library, uh, that will be important later. So I'm gonna name this tutorial and uh, make sure that no additional data or reference points, you don't want anything else clogging up your scene. So we'll hit save and export. Once that exports, we will go ahead and come back into Blender and we will hit open. Uh, we're not gonna save this. And let's see if we can find in the asset browser, asset library, there we go, tutorial. Okay, so this is really freaking cool. Thank you, Mark Roberts, for doing this. Um, if you can see, we have a, a whole entire rig that's already in the home position, which is amazing. So. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up some stuff here. I don't know why this is showing it so weird. Oh, view layer. Okay, so you don't wanna to go to scenes, you wanna to go to view layer, that makes sense. This looks more normal, that's what I'm used to. So we'll get rid of these two collections. Uh, we'll name this Bolt X 
and we will create a new empty really quick. Plain axis. Uh, if you come down to viewport display, you can show the axes if you want, or you can show the name, it's up to you. We'll rename it bolt X, and we will take the track and the rail and click and drag, hold control and shift, and drag and drop it right on top of the bolt X, and you can see by the tooltip there, uh, it will set the parent. So now this empty is the parent, which means that the rest of the rig uh, has its own local coordinates. So we're not gonna manipulate or mess with any of the tracking data coming in from Flare, which is really nice. So uh, we'll go ahead and expand this. If we shift click on track, we can see all the rest of it. Uh, I'm gonna shift click on rail as well so that everything is visible. And we wanna get rid of these little link icons. So this means that the texture is linked to something else and we want it to be local. And I'll show you why that's important later. So we hold, or we click A, and then we right click and we click make local, we get rid of the links. So now all the textures are local to this file, which is, which is pretty handy. So um, we can go ahead and deselect all of that. And you'll notice that at each of the joints, this rig has an empty, which is storing all of the position data uh, for this particular thing. So if we drag, or excuse me, if we grab the pan axis right here and press G on our keyboard to move it around, you'll see that not only does it move the pan, but it also moves the tilt and the roll, the camera mount and the camera mesh and all that stuff. And if we grab the empty behind it, now we're moving the arm, pan, tilt, roll, like all that stuff. So this is why the hierarchy here is very important. So you see we have track, we move that around, everything after it follows. If we move rotate, everything after rotate follows and vice versa. This is known as a forward kinematic chain. Uh, and so you'll notice that we have some keyframes here. And since we don't want these competing with our OSC data stream, we wanna go ahead and get rid of those. So I'm gonna press A again to select everything. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit A down here on my timeline and just delete it. Uh, you can also just double check up here in the item that you don't have this yellow anymore. So if I undo that, you'll see these are yellow. You can right click and clear keyframes if you want. I don't think that works for everything though. So I'm just gonna select this, select these and delete. And if you don't see your timeline, uh, make sure that you, know, you click right here and choose timeline um, and you should be good to go. So we should be mostly set up now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go to Flare and go ahead and turn on the right um, IP address and everything for OSC. So I'm gonna go to setups, external devices, and you're gonna need two data outs for this to work properly, okay? Uh, mainly because uh, OSC XYZ is for the target and camera. We're not really gonna use it necessarily for the camera, more so for the target, um, but at least uh, you need the XY, or sorry, you definitely need the OSC axis to drive uh, the rest of the rig. So we're gonna turn OSC axis on, you're gonna set it to UDP, uh, you're gonna set it to the IP address of the machine that you want to broadcast to, and then you're gonna type in your port number. And then this can be whatever port number you want. Um, then you're gonna have data out, uh, the first one or the second one, it doesn't matter which order. Uh, you're gonna choose OSC XYZ, you're gonna set it to UDP, and you're gonna broadcast it to whatever IP address again. Should be the same IP address and port number. You'll save and apply, and we're pretty much good to go on the Flare side now. So we'll come back over to Blender, and we'll come to Add Routes Configs right here, and we will make sure that we're listening on the right IP address uh, and port number. Uh, so from here, we can come to our routes and we're going to make a new route. And there's a couple different ways to do this. You can click add route and then you'll see that we have ID block object, which is what we want. We can select the object with this eyedropper. We'll choose our track first. Uh, the path will be location. We can type that in manually if you want. Um, our engine will be OSC. Uh, the index will be zero, one, or two meaning X, Y, or Z, okay? So since we want to manipulate the track to move along the X axis like this, and all I did to do that was select the track and hit G on my keyboard to move it, and then hit X to lock it to the X axis, you'll see that this is what we want to actually have happen. So we know that we wanna be on index zero, which is X, and then the address, we can find the address by using uh, protocol, which is a software that you can download. I will leave a link for that in the description as well. So if we go to protocol, we go to this OSC tab right here, we type in the port number and we hit enabled, you'll see all the data that's coming out of Flare is right there. You only need it enabled for a second. So now we can see all of the addresses that are coming out of Flare and the float values that are assigned with them or the integers or whatever. Um, and so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our track. 
So slash flare slash track with a capital T. The capital is very important. We will copy that. We'll come down to routes and we'll paste that in the address. So now if I hit receive, what's going to happen is the track uh, empty is going to uh, move its location coordinates, not rotation Eulers or anything like that. It's location along the X axis based on the float values that are coming from this address and, and that should be good to go. So we can test this really quick by moving the track. Let's see. So if we move the track forward, we see that nothing is happening. So we can double check that we have everything enabled. So if we come back to add routes config, we can see that we're not listening. So we need to click this and we should be good to go. Oh, and our rig disappeared. I wonder why that is. Let's find out. So flare, if I move the track now, You'll see that the rig's gonna go flying. Uh, that is because right now it seems, for whatever reason, the track values are uh, in centimeters. And so I'm pretty sure that these are in meters uh, by default in Blender. So track is 11 centimeters, which would come through as 11 meters here, which is what we don't want. Okay. So I will turn this back off turn add routes back on here so that we're listening in Blender. And then what I'm going to do is for actualization, this is where we can change from replace to expression. And we're going to be using a lot of expressions in this one. Not too many, but just a few. So in means the data that's coming in. And then all we're going to do is multiply it by 0 0.01 so that now we're in uh, meters. And now if we try this again and we move our track, everything is functioning as expected, which is good. So uh, the way that the rest of the rig is driven is in degrees and degrees in Blender are measured in radians. And so fortunately for us, the add routes uh, plugin will do that conversion automatically. So uh, one last thing to tidy up, I'm going to come to tools and I'm going to check show categories and show name setting. And I'm going to create a new category up here and I'm going to call it bolt X and we'll hit OK. And then uh, actually, I'm going to rename that to uh, Bolt X OSC. OK, we're good. All right, so then now I can change this to Bolt X OSC. And the route name, I can name it to Track, because this is now our track. So this route through the Add Routes plugin is handling the track's location. And again, because of the hierarchy, you'll notice that when we move the track, the rest of the joints just follow it, right? So since we've handled the location now, we can work on rotation. Um, and so if we select rotate, uh, you can either click this plus sign to duplicate it uh, and kind of copy it from there and move forward, or you can come up to the item and you can do this for any item in Blender. So this is really cool. Uh, I can grab rotation. It doesn't matter which one you select. We'll choose that again with the index, remember. So if I right click here, I can create a real-time route. You can do this on almost any parameter in Blender if you guys want to play around with this later. It's a really cool plugin. Uh, and so rotate is now set up. If we come back to routes, uh, we can add this to here, to our category, and name it to rotate. And then you'll you'll see that it automatically filled in the item block or the ID block, the item block, and the uh, the path block as well. So we're now on rotation Euler, and you'll see that it's automatically converting from degrees to radians. Um, and so uh, we'll switch this to OSC. Uh, let's figure out for rotate which um, <laughs> which axis we need to rotate on. So if we come down to viewport display and we display the axes, you'll see that we want the uh, rotate to rotate along the Z axis. So again, I hit R on my keyboard to rotate it, and then I hit Z uh, to lock it to that axis. So that's how we want this particular axis to function. So I'll hit escape to undo all of that and I'll make sure that we don't have any uh, data in there, which is good. Uh, and then I will choose index two to represent the Z axis. That's what we're gonna be manipulating. So the rotate Euler will be manipulated on the Z axis based on this data at this address, which will be slash flare slash rotate with a capital R. And you can check that if you want in protocol. Uh, and then we will leave it on replace for now and see if it works properly. And we'll just hit receive and we should be getting data from Flare now. So I will move the rotate 
and that is functioning basically exactly how we want it to behave. So let's test that a little more. Rotate, we're going left, it's going left, going right, it's going right, and that's pretty much it. And you'll notice again, because of the hierarchy, everything after the rotate is following, so this is really cool. So now that we have the rotate behaving the way that we want, uh, we can go ahead and move on to the lift. So uh, what I'm going to do is just duplicate this right here, clicking this plus sign, and then I'm gonna turn it off. It's just important, just do that. It just makes your whole life easier, just trust me. Uh, and we're going to select now the lift, and we're gonna leave it on rotation Euler. Uh, we're going to come to the lift here, and in viewport display under object data properties, we're gonna enable the axes. And if we hit R on our, our if we hit R on our keyboard and press Y, you'll notice that that's the axis that we want to lock it onto. Okay, so except that was actually going around the global Y. So when you have an object selected, if you come up here, you can choose local, which is what we want for this test. So we'll do R Y, and that's the axis that we want to lock it onto. So um, now that we have that, we will make sure that uh, this is named to lift and we will change the index to one for Y. We will change this to listen to the lift address coming out of Flare. We will leave it on replace, and now we will hit receive. And you'll notice that it's wrong. So in some cases, what you're gonna have to do is change from replace to expression, and just invert it, and you're good. Um, some of the addresses just need to be inverted. Not really sure why, but it just needs to be that way. So lift, works now and we are good to go move on to the next thing which is arm so i'm going to close this one duplicate it open it turn it off we're going to change this to um, arm which will be up here we will change the uh we'll grab the arm turn the axes on Looks like it needs to, or still in local, looks like it needs to rotate along the y-axis as well. So we'll leave that on index one. We'll change this to arm and uh, we'll leave it inverted and just see how it works. We'll hit receive and we should be good to go here. Yep, arm is good. All right, we will copy this one, uh, turn it off. And we will change this to pan. And we will, let's uh, grab the pan arm, turn the axes on so we can see. Uh, pan will probably want to rotate around Z. So we will uh, leave that on index two. Change this to the pan address. Click receive and let's see if it's accurate. So pan looks like it's inverted, um, or it looks like technically it's not inverted, but we have it inverted. So let's get rid of that minus sign, and the pan arm should be good now. Good to go. We will move on to the next one. So we will, oh, let's rename this to pan. Duplicate it. Uh, next, we will grab uh, the tilt. And you can check your hierarchy right here if you want. I've just done this enough times. <laughs> we'll grab our tilt, turn the axes on. It's going to want to be the Y axis. So index one, uh, we'll change this to tilt. And tilt. And it should be good to go. I forgot to turn it off though. So let's see if that messed us up. It did. So we now have two rotation values up here. Um, and since we're rotating around the Y and not the Z, we can just delete this. And it looks like we do need to invert uh, this particular one. So we'll invert it. We should be good to go there. All right. And then after tilt, again, let's turn it off. I'm glad you guys got to see that at least once. Uh, next will be roll. We'll grab the roll. Uh, Roll will be along the x-axis in this instance, okay? And you guys should know that because if you're doing your nodal offsets, you know that it's based off of the roll axis. And so it's like x, y, z. 
and uh, X nodal is always down to the nodal point, and then Z is forward to the nodal point. So um, that, that'll be important later as well. So we have our X, Y, and Z offsets, or our coordinates right here. We're gonna be rolling along the X axis for the roll. Uh, so we'll change that to index zero. We will listen for the roll information. Uh, we'll turn this on and see if that's accurate as is or if we need to invert it. Looks like it's good there. And we are good to go. So that is everything for the FK rig. Uh, and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the rig back to home. It just makes my life easier for this next step. And I will hide all of these and I will add in a camera and I will make sure that it is a child of the Bolt X uh, empty here by hitting Control and Shift and dragging it onto there. So we're good. And then I'm going to hit Alt R and Alt G so that it's at zero. I'm going to uh, rotate it globally along the Y axis, negative 90 degrees and then rotate it along the x-axis globally uh, 90 degrees. So now the camera is oriented uh, in the same direction as the rig. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use my cursor to snap the camera to the roll axis. So I'll select the roll axis here, and you can double check by uh, you know, clicking here and finding the roll axis. You're going to hit Shift-S, and you're gonna go cursor to selected. So now our 3D cursor has moved right here. We'll grab our camera, and I'm going to grab uh, Shift S again and selection to cursor. So now the camera is right here. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, at this point, you need the camera to be a child of the roll axis uh, in order to behave properly. Or uh, it can also be a child of the camera, the red camera, uh, the mount, whatever. But since you t uh, put in your nodal offsets based on the roll axis, uh, it's usually best practice to just make the camera a child of the roll axis. And me personally, you don't have to do it this way. Again, you can click and drag and shift click and, or sorry, you can click and drag and then hold control and shift and then let go on top of the roll in order to make it apparent or a child of the roll axis, or uh, what I like to do, since I don't want my camera to be like hidden all in this whole mess of things, I'm just gonna grab my camera, and right here we have constraints, and I'm gonna give it a child of constraint, and I'm gonna grab the roll as my target, and so now um, anywhere that I move the roll axis, uh, it should follow, which is pretty cool. So now it will roll, it will tilt, all those things just like our camera, which means that all of the roll modes and carts functions and everything work uh, with Flair calculating where the camera needs to be rather than leaving it up to Blender for any kind of like damped track or locked track sort of constraints to look at a target. Um, so I will go back to home now and I will grab my camera and I will leave that constraint on. Uh, and while it's there, what I will do is come back to the item, and this is where we're going to put in our nodal offsets. So I'm going to go back to Flare. We're going to go Setups, Lens, and we'll just grab your lens here. Once you've calibrated your lens or not, it's up to you if you just want to guess. Uh, if you're happy with where the camera is in this 3D viewport here, then you can copy these nodal offsets. Uh, and so I'm just going to copy the X nodal, which again, remember, for the roll axis is going to be... Uh, down on the z-axis, which means that we need to grab our camera and we're going to uh, select the end right here, keep this information and hit minus and then paste. And it'll just do the math for us to subtract the nodal offset um, along the roll axis is negative or x axis, if that makes sense. So for the camera, that would be the z-axis, which is why you have to do it this way. So now we need to move it forward to the nodal point of the lens. So we'll come back to flare and we'll find the Z nodal. We will copy this. These are the only two nodal values that you need. Uh, and we are going to paste it right here. We're gonna grab our X and we're gonna hit plus and paste and it should move it forward. 
Um, there is another way that you can check this and I'll show that to you guys really quick just so you can uh, do it that way if you don't wanna type it in every time. Uh, so another way to do this is if we hit Alt G and we reset this back to zero and we get rid of this uh, child of constraint and uh, we come to the camera item location uh, let's first zero this out. So we go 90, zero, negative 90. So it's still oriented the way that we want. That's important. Uh, we come to location, we right click and we hit create real time route. We come back to routes. Uh, this is where you'll want that second data stream anyways. We'll add this to the category. We'll name it cam X. And then we have the camera's location index zero for the X axis OSC slash flare slash lowercase cam X. Uh, we'll move the camera to the X coordinate uh, right there. And so now what we'll do is we'll duplicate this. Uh, we'll change this to cam Y, uh, index one, cam Y. Then we will uh, duplicate this one more time uh, and we will change this to cam Z, uh, index two, name it cam Z. And you'll see that it has placed the camera right where the nodal offset is, which is uh, pretty handy as well. Just one thing, uh, you'll want to uh, turn this off. So that uh, basically the camera is just kind of like uh, moving itself based on the relationship. And so with the camera, we'll add that uh, child of constraint back and we'll make sure that it's a constraint of the roll axis uh, and it should be good to go. So I'm not, I'm, I've, I've had some weird stuff happen when I left these on, but let's actually try it. I'm curious. Yeah. So this is the problem when you have like child of constraint, uh, mixed with the data coming in. Uh, it just seems to like do some weird calculations. So I'll go back to home. And so we don't have any funky stuff happening. You can leave the child of constraint on and all I'm going to do is turn this off for cam X, Y, and Z. And all we really used that for was to just find the nodal point of the lens. And so you should be good to go now. So yeah, now it's gonna uh, behave the way that we want. So that was something I figured out the hard way. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> so we're pretty much there. You'll notice that the only thing that we don't have at this point is the target. And so basically the same thing that we did for the camera uh, we're going to do for our target. So we'll hit shift A and we're going to add in an empty uh, plane axis and we're going to scale it down and we're going to hit alt G uh, to reset it because you'll notice that the cursor was over here. So in Blender, wherever your 3D cursor is, that's where objects will spawn in. Uh, and so we're going to name this camera target. We will parent it to the rig uh, empty so that everything moves with it together, which is nice. Uh, and then we will grab our camera target uh, and we will add some routes. Uh, so the first thing will be for our location. Also, one thing I like to do is just turn the name on so that way you can see camera target. It's just nice for previs, you know? So we'll come to the location. We'll create a real-time route. Uh, this one will be, again, in our category for Boltex OSC. This will be target X. Um, we will be uh, using OSC on index zero for the X axis. And it'll be slash flare slash targ X. And again, you guys can check all these addresses in here. So we have target X, cam X, all that stuff. If you're using roll up, you will have an up vector target as well that will be up X, Y, and Z. But uh, since we are taking advantage of the child and parent relationships inside of Blender, uh, we don't actually have to use the up vector target to get the camera to roll properly. So that's nice. Um, so for this, we have target X, we're replacing it. Uh, and then we can go ahead and receive. And the target is way out there. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, and if you get lost in Blender, um, if you click on whatever thing you want to focus on and hit the period key, it will kind of like lock the, the center back to there, which is really handy. So uh, keep that in mind. And we will duplicate the target X. We'll change it to Y. Uh, index one and targ Y. And then last but not least, target Z. Um, and we'll change it to index two, targ Z. So hopefully by now you guys are pretty familiar with how the whole add routes plugin works. 
um, which is pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and move the target closer and you see that it moves uh, pretty quick. It displays faster than Flare does, which is kind of nice, but you know, Flare has way more important calculations going on than just displaying it, you know? So um, from here we can go to Cart's view and just orbit around our target. I mean, this is really cool, guys. So um, we'll go to home, I'll bring the target in, and we'll just get this ready for uh, saving it to our asset browser uh, so that you guys can drag and drop this in. So um, you'll notice that we made a category. Make sure that your category is selected and hit export and then create a folder for your add routes JSON files uh, or .routes files. And you're gonna hit bolt x osc. I'll just do complete rig bolt x. And we're good there. I will export that. And it will, if you don't have this selected, uh, the categories one, and you have all of these in different categories, then it won't actually save anything. So just keep that in mind. But if you have this on default and none of these are in categories, they're just on default, then it will save. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay. So from here, we can make sure that these materials are displaying properly for the thumbnails. Uh, so if you'll notice, viewport display color is this, whereas the actual um, base color is this. So if you select whatever object you want uh, and you come to the material editor or the material uh, properties right here and you hover over the base color, you can hit control C, it'll copy it. And you scroll down to viewport display and then you can paste it. And that'll change for all the objects that are referencing that material. So then uh, we'll drag or we'll grab the, uh, Mount here, same thing, control C, control V. We'll grab the camera, control C, control V, and we'll grab the rail, control C and control V. This will not work if you have the materials linked. So this is why we had to make them local in order for this to work uh, that we did early on. Uh, and so from here, uh, we can actually uh, drag a window out. I'll drag one on this side. And we will go to our asset browser. And then from here, I've created one called Moco Rigs. Okay, so uh, we'll make sure that we're on the uh, current file and we'll click this plus sign to create a new asset catalog and you can name it whatever you want. We'll just do tutorial so that we have that saved here. And then I'm going to save this project inside my asset library folder. You can put this asset library folder wherever you want, but you need the project itself to be saved within this folder. And then you need to grab the whole collection, right click, mark as asset. And now that it's marked as an asset, you can come to unassigned and you can click and drag this into the tutorial and you'll see that it's right there. Just save one more time. Uh, and you'll notice that the thumbnail came in nice and clean with all the textures, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the last thing you want to do, if this is your, if you're new to Blender, you come to uh, Edit Preferences, and you're going to go to File Paths, and make sure that your asset library, uh, your user library, if you you might need to click the plus sign, uh, is here, and make sure that the path is to that asset library folder that has the actual project folder in it. This is so that the asset browser can reference all the data or all the the textures and everything, the geometry, like all that stuff from the actual project. So. Now that we have our routes saved, we have the project saved, it's in our asset browser, uh, we should be able to just go to a new full or a new project. We'll select this, delete everything. Uh, we'll come to our asset browser, we'll go to all, we'll go to tutorial, we'll grab our bolt X. Do this before you do the add routes thing. Otherwise you'll have to like repair some connections and stuff. So this is this is more uh, quick, more efficient. So we'll drag the bolt X out here. Since we have referenced a collection, you'll notice that it's just like nothing. It's just a collection and we want to be able to uh, manipulate it. And so since I clicked away, um, I've lost the ability to, to do this. So I need to delete it and I'm going to drag it in. And then right here we have add collection. Click this. Again, if you, if you click away, that window goes away forever. Okay. So make sure that you do this first. Drag and drop it in. Click this add collection right here and click instance. And now, where the fuck did it go? 
All right. For whatever reason, I'm, I don't know what the hell is going on there. I'm not going to say this. We're going to try one more time. All right. So if you drag this in and you uncheck instance, there you go. That's, that's how it should look. <laughs> then what happens is um, now you have, you know, all the, the meshes and the hierarchies, the, the child parent relationships, all those things. So uh, we'll grab the empty and hit alt G so that it goes back to zero. And then uh, we should be good to go. Uh, except for the fact that we need to now make sure that the project routes uh, get imported properly. These are called project routes, meaning that they're project dependent. So you actually won't be able to see these uh, even though you saved your project uh, that way, if that makes sense. So that's why we exported that file. So now we will import uh, and we will find the folder. So we have, there we go. That's the one that we made, complete rig bolt X dot routes. We'll import it. And now we can see that all of our project routes are here and you can just double check that, you know, each one's good. Sometimes like the camera, this is why I like to drop the rig in first because now it actually has objects to reference. Otherwise, uh, you'll just get like, um, something wrong. Like it won't be able to, it won't be able to locate it. So, um, it'll just say like, it'll be red basically, but, um, we have our camera, which is good. Uh, and so, we're good there. These are turned off anyways, so it shouldn't matter. Um, target, everything should be good. I can double check real quick to see if the connection with Flare is working. Yep, and we're good to go. Uh, and so one thing that I like to do, uh, just a little pro tip, is uh, instead of being like this the whole entire time, I like to see the rig. Um, oh, what's going on? All right, so if you get stuck like that for whatever reason, I don't know what the hell that was, select another object, hit the period key, and it'll kind of like lock to that object. That was really bizarre. Sorry, you guys had to see that. Can I replicate that? Okay. That's so weird. It like gets me stuck inside the camera. Okay, so shift, middle mouse click, come over here, click, period, and now we're good. All right, that was weird. Anyways, so what I like to do is I'll just drag up from this one. I'll make another 3D viewport. Where are you at? And I will hit N and T and like hide all this shit. Go to view, tool, settings, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll just turn off all this stuff. I'll turn these off and this, all that stuff. And then I'll hit zero and it'll go to the camera's perspective. And so then if you're like, you know, bringing in uh, different objects that you want to kind of like pivot around or that sort of thing, you always have like a rendered view basically. And if you hit home, it'll just kind of full screen it. Uh, and what the, the reason I like to have it kind of in this orientation is now I can come back to flare and I can make my focus kind of go out to that target and boop, it's right there. I can go to carts view, and now I can just kind of like orbit around this target, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that pretty much does it. Um, that is all that I have for you guys today. Again, my name is Ben. I'm located out of Clearwater, Florida. Uh, I made this tool for myself. I just wanted a better way of kind of pre-visualizing uh, different moves for clients. Uh, they'll kind of give me some things of, we want the camera to move this way. And then now I'm able to actually use flare and see what kind of like axis velocity and acceleration limits I run into. And I know that the simulate plugin already exists, but um, I don't have a subscription for Maya and I don't plan on buying it or learning it. I was already familiar with Blender. So for me, this just made the most sense to use a tool that's free and just spend a couple of days and, you know, learn how to develop something like this. So um, again, I hope you guys find this useful. Uh, if you want to leave me a donation, that would be much appreciated, but definitely not necessary. This is my contribution to the motion control community. Uh, I hope that you guys get a lot of use out of this. And uh, if you want to connect on Instagram, hit me up. And yeah, that's all I got. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.